On that dark night, Jesus gathered his apostles around a table, took the bread, broke it, passed it around. He simply said, eat this, for this is my body. He took the cup, again, gave thanks, passed it around, and said, drink this, this is my blood, the blood of the everlasting covenant, given up for all of mankind and for the forgiveness of sin. Like that night, there was prayers for those who had elder leaders in prayer. Almighty God, we come before this table, knowing that we are burdened and that we have fallen far short of what you would have us to do, but also knowing that we fall down on our knees at this table. And take of this bread, which is the symbol of the broken body, broken for us, that we might be made whole. Then we are washed clean by the end. Thank you, O God, for this great sacrifice in his name. Most gracious God, we come this morning to your table to take the emeralds, which represent the body and the blood of your son Jesus. Be with every heart, Lord that we would be reminded of the cruel death he suffered for us. We come with all of our faults. We come asking for your forgiveness. As we take this cup, we pray that we would be filled with your Holy Spirit, that we may leave this place of worship to go out and be your servants in our troubled world. We ask it in Christ's name. I have going on 32 years of marriage, and it's been a good marriage, and partly the reason is because Vicki sends me to Barnes & Noble to uh, get a self-help book people, or at least she thinks I may need to work on something, so having been there recently, I found lots of books there, and I thought, you know, a lot of these books to be condensed in the Bible, so I looked and studied it and found Romans 12 actually condenses many of the traits that perhaps Jesus wanted to teach, or did teach his disciples, and many of the tra traits that we want. And uh, Jesus chose 12 motley, rugged men, mentored them for a ministry after his death, and those traits that he taught them, I think, is in Romans. And as they went on for a new faith and a new ministry, following his death in the Last Supper, they had all had opportunities to put his word into practice, much like we have opportunity today to put his word in practice. So I think in summary, this, this section of, of, of Romans simply says, commit yourself to God, live in harmony and peace, be of a new mind. You can do what God wants you to do. God has given you gifts, use them to do good. We are one, one in Christ, help your fellow men. Give gladly to those without. Love sincerely, hate what is wrong. Hold to your heart what is good. Love one another, be at peace with the world. Be happy because you have hope. Bless those who wrong you. Do not curse them. Do not be proud. If your enemy is in need, give your enemy what he needs. Win victory over wrong by doing what, what is right and just. So let's partake in this meeting. Amen. scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Now John's disciples 
and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and they said to Jesus, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot fast while the bridegroom is with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The day will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast on that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch will pull away from it. The new from the old, and worse, the tear will be made. And no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and the skins will be lost. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skins. God and his blessing reading this word. I love how Jesus in this encounter along the way compares the faith of his disciples, both those ancient disciples and us today, how Jesus compares that faith to new wine. Now this may be a difficult metaphor for us, for it is not new wine that is valued in this day and age, it is old wine. It was just a couple of years ago that someone at auction bought one bottle of wine for over $100,000. And it was mostly because it was over 200 years old. Our conventional thinking is old wine is valuable. New wine can be bought at the store for two or three dollars a bottle if you know where to shop. Also, we're not familiar with wine skins. We don't put our wine in wine skins anymore. We put it in bottles or in casks. So that bit of the metaphor is difficult for us, can be difficult for us to understand. Oh, you may see some wine skins out at the parade if you were there yesterday, but by and large, not a bottle that we drink from today. And so we have this problem. In our day and age, new wine is common. Old wine is valuable, and yet in ancient times, in ancient times we read the great blessing of new wine. When Isaac blessed his son Jacob, he said to him, May God give you heaven's dew and earth's riches, an abundance of grain and new wine. So it was a blessing. One person could wish for another new wine, but it was also a blessing that could be given to God, a gift worthy to be given to God. Again, the Old Testament reads, the Israelites gave their first fruits of the grain, new wine, oil, and honey. So you see new wine in the Bible, in the ancient world, it was an exciting blessing. A worthy blessing, a worthy gift, even to give God. And so what is it about new wine that Jesus would want to use this for the kind of faith that his disciples had then and we can have now? Well, the first thing that we can say about new wine is it is abundant. It is abundant. You see, it's new, so we haven't had a chance to drink it yet, so there's a lot of it. And it can be shared with others. So there's one Why aspect didn't you turn off of our speakers? Faith, an abundant I didn't. Huh? faith. I didn't. Plenty for everyone. But Jesus also mentioned specifically one aspect of I new wine. Did. New wine changes. New wine matures. That's why you do not put new wine in old wine skins that are hard and tough. You need new, fresh wine skins because that wine is going to be changing and growing better and better. And there's another mark of this kind of faith that Christ is talking about. What's going on? Faith. Oops, excuse me. Where no matter where we are in our lives, no matter how long we have been Christians, no matter how long we have been studying the Bible, 
we can have a hope that our faith is going to grow more and more, get better and better, no matter what point we find ourselves in our lives. A changing faith, a fresh and exciting faith, a worthy blessing to others, and given in such abundance that we can share. Well, there are times, there are times when we feel our faith is a bit more old and mature, like that old bottle of wine. And yes, it is a reliable faith. It has weathered a lot of storms. It has become stronger along the way, but we yearn for some of that new wine as well. But Jesus said the old wine is good. There is a time for it. There is a place for it. But we have also been promised. We have been given the promise by Jesus Christ that our faith can be new and fresh and abundant and changing and growing and hopeful, hopeful of the future. We need some new wine in our lives. That kind of faith, we need some new wine in our church. That kind of faith. We need some new wine in our families. That kind of faith. Growing and abundant and joyful. This is the kind of faith Jesus is speaking about when he talks of the disciples' faith. Our faith being like new wine. That sounds good to me. A faith that is hopeful, a faith that is growing, a faith that is abundant. Yes, that is wonderful, but how, how do we get it? How do we grab on to it? We know that we cannot manufacture it. It's not something we can build by ourselves or grow on our own. We do not have the recipe for it. No, this faith is a gift. It is a gift from God. It is made possible by the ministry, the death, the resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. And it is available to all, to each and every one of us. A faith available to us all. So once again, what do we need? How do we get it? How do we grab a hold of this new faith, this abundant faith, this growing, exciting faith? Well, God provides the faith. And Jesus' words tell us we provide the container. We want this faith. We know it's there for us. If we accept it, we must have a container in which to put it. Like many gifts that people give. Something that you can have, but you need to have something to put it in, to carry it around with. And certainly if God is offering us new wine, a new faith, we must have something to put it in, and it needs to be new wineskins. The old wineskins, they're rough and brittle. This new faith cannot contain them. They will burst Wine will be lost, the wine skins will be lost, the faith will be gone. We need new wine skins. So once again, what is Jesus talking about here? How do we get these new wine skins? Well, Jesus said it's the practices of faith. In this case, it was fasting. His disciples were not fasting. That was the wine skin, an old wine skin. And they needed some new practices. They needed to do some new things because they were hearing a new kind of word. They were experiencing a new kind of faith. So they needed some new practices to go along with it. So if we want that faith. God is offering it to us. It is there, but we need a container for it. We need some practices that will hold this new wine, 
So practices that can contain it, that can grow with it. But what are some of these? Well, some of the lists are very familiar. In fact, they all pretty much are very familiar to us. How about service as a new container for this day? We have this abundant faith, or we want it, and how are we going to keep it in our lives? How is it going to grow? Well, by serving others. It is one of the great ironies that Jesus spent so much time trying to teach his disciples is how do you make your faith grow? How do you help yourself get stronger? How do you benefit your spirituality, your relationship with God? How do you do all these things? By serving others. Instead of looking inward, you look outward. Instead of trying to help yourself, you help someone else. So many people will go out on long life quests, seekers they are called, looking for spiritual enlightenment, looking for ways to get closer and closer to God, and so many of the answers are focus on yourself. Those are the answers of today, of our culture. Focus on yourself. Focus on yourself, and that's the way that you're going to grow closer to God. That's the way you're going to get this kind of experience, this kind of faith, this kind of meaning we all want. And Jesus tells us over and over again, it's by focusing on others, by concentrating on our neighbor, and loving God and loving our neighbor, and serving God by serving our neighbor. We're blessed this week as a church to have so many ways that we can be of service to others. We can volunteer at the Highland Dinner this week. We can volunteer with support our troops. If we can't be at the Highland Dinner, we can give some money and put it in the soup can at the end of the service today. And then there are hundreds of ways that we can serve throughout every day of our life. And that's a container. That is a container for our faith. And if we accept that in our lives, if we embrace that kind of service, we will feel this new wine filling us up, overflowing in our lives, this kind of faith that just cannot be content. How else? Service is one way. Worship is another. And here we are, gathered for worship. But let me tell you, the more I experience worship, the more I experience leading worship, the more I am convinced that so much of it depends on what we bring to it. Each and every one of us. And if we are going to bring a sense of awe, if we are going to come here looking to encounter God, then so often that is what happens. When we are in trouble, when this becomes an old wine skin. Predictable, something that we take for granted, especially our table here. We as members of the disciples of Christ, we come to this table every week. And it's so easy for it to get old and repetitive and for us to forget what's actually going on in the moments that we spend as a community around this table. We can have this new, fresh wine in our lives by making sure that when we come here to worship, and when we worship in little ways throughout the week, we bring this willingness to experience God, this expectation that we will encounter God's spirit. Of course, we can also fellowship and we can study. But let me tell you, a lot of the ways, a lot of the containers, these new wine skins where we can put our faith, a lot of them happen out in the world. Our work can be a new wineskin. You know, if we haven't experienced our faith, if we haven't expressed our faith through the jobs that we do, then we're missing an important part of the faith experience, the spiritual experience. If we have not experienced it through our marriages, through our relationships, then we are missing an important part of the spiritual experience. These are all new wineskins. And we want some fresh wine. We want something alive and abundant in our lives, a faith that excites us. And we need to give it some containers. We put it. 
And let me tell you, one of the best times, one of the very best times to look for these new wine skins in your life, these new opportunities to experience God's presence, to experience faith, is when you're going through some change in your life. For every time something in your life changes, you're going to have a new opportunity to grow and to change yourself. And you can make that a time of spiritual growth and spiritual change if you so choose. I've known several people who have gone through the experience of having open heart surgery. And for them, it was a time of healing, a time of communing with God, seeking God's healing spirit, seeking God's comfort and strength. But afterward, many of them end up taking that on as a ministry in their life. A new wine skin. So they have been through it. And now when they hear a friend or a neighbor or someone they don't even know who may be going through that procedure, they call them. And they talk to them. And then they visit them in the hospital and they let them know what to expect. And for them, having gone through open heart surgery, it's a new wine skin. A way to experience faith anew. I knew one fellow at the last church that I served in Dallas, and he had, had, so, he had, had a long life. Lived a long life. He was now in his 90s. He was still living at home. And he had served God in so many different ways throughout his life. As, as his life changed, so of the ways that he was serving God and serving his neighbor. And when I met him, all he could do in a day physically, he couldn't get out much. He couldn't do the things that he was used to doing, the hobbies he had used to have. He couldn't serve the church the way he used to serve the church. But every day, he would walk around his house for an hour, back and forth through his house, and that was his exercise. But as he walked, he prayed for people. He told me once that he thought he prayed for about three or 400 people. And he remembered each of them, maybe not by name, but remembered their face and who they were. And he had a great method. He started with his family, and of course, he remembered each of them and prayed for them as he walked. And then he remembered his Sunday school class. He thought of where everybody sits in Sunday school, and if his class is anything like most of ours, everybody has their place, right? And so he remembered where they were, and he remembered each of them in his prayer. Then he remembered all of those he knew about in the church, and he remembered where they would sit, usually. And then he would think of a map of the United States and think of oh, all the people he knew lived all around the United States. And it just got bigger and bigger until finally the hour was done, and he prayed for all of these people. And that was his new wine skin, 95 years old. And this hour long walk and this prayer that he would make as he walked through his own home. That was his new wine skin. Maybe he's, I think it is for us to get used to a settled, mature faith. And not to expect more. But here is Christ telling us that we have a right to expect it. For if old wine is all we are drinking, then we are missing out on something very important. Something Christ wanted for each of us. God makes the wine. God gives it to us. God gives us this faith. And it's up to us to have the containers in which to put it. And when we do, the old proverb will be fulfilled. Honor the Lord by what you do. And your barns will be filled to overflowing. And your vats will brim over with new wine. Let us bow. Loving God, we do give thanks for the abundance that you give us in our lives, in this world the abundance that you offer us in our faith. Lord, grant us the wisdom to accept that can hold it and can help it grow. It is in Jesus Christ's name we pray.